So grateful for being here. Mother stone. This remarkable stone is cherished for its uncut, unaltered state, as it is believed to carry its natural energy and vibration. I love the fresh air. Eucalyptus. I hear hummingbirds. Historically, the Inca and earlier civilizations like Tehuantinsayo valued more than just copper and stone. They regarded certain materials as sacred gifts from the gods. Beyond metals, these cultures utilized complex compounds, including meteorites, which vary in composition from rocky to metallic. You hear the hawk.
This one has mother stone in it. special place on the backside of Huano Pichu at um, what the site is everyone calls Machu Picchu but a lot of people are now hiking Huana Pichu, Huana Pichu. Um, and you know archaeologists talk about the fact that this place was about sun worship um, interesting thing though if you go to the far side of uh, Huana Pichu there's a moon temple temple of the moon and now they call it the Grand Caverna, maybe because uh, the narrative feeds sun worship. So you can't really have a temple to the moon when everyone is feeding a narrative of sun worship. <laughs> okay, but I'm in a place where very few people get to come. Um, this, the, the, some of the stone is megalithic, and then it's been built up and closed in with um, Inca stonework. And there's actually grout or uh, small masonry tucked between the larger stones in this one. So it, it seems fairly, fairly modern, fairly modern uh, in comparison to some of the other sites we've seen. Um, interesting thing about this place, though, is what is in the coves. And I'm excited because I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get in here. So first of all, if you look behind me there, that square block, the two of them, that's for grinding uh, wheat and corn. 600-year-old artifact. And look around it. In each one of the coves, I don't want to hit my head, there's things tucked in each cove. Do you know what they are? They're meteorites. There's 12, except for one. That one might be the iron one. One of them is 80% iron. The rest are meteorites. And it had me thinking, um, we see all the other temples with these coves and they're all empty. So I went back and found one of those 100-year-old books. I found the book of and photo photographs of Hiram Bingham when he first came here and discovered the site. <laughs> so I looked through those photos and I'll share some of them here. They came in and they pulled all the vegetation out um, and they just pulled everything out of the stone structure. And this left from something that was overgrown, you couldn't see the stone in some cases, to an, a clear structure like we see them now with em empty coves. So I come here where people don't come and there's meteorites in the cove. Um, I was just wondering what used to be in the other coves. So as I, I was digging through these photos, I found one. I found one that has a stone or a meteorite, just like these when Hiram Bingham was first here. So I'll take some more photos, but I'm, I'm very excited. This is, um, <sighs> hmm, trying not to get emotional. This is the end of an initiatory path for me, and that's what this used to be. This used to be a place of initiation for people. Um, and they used to, and we'll take pictures of the Temple of the Moon soon, but they used to come in here and do ceremony with ayahuasca. And they would sit in the portals, and they would commune uh, with spirit. They would commune with the gods. They would have, they would journey and have vision and use these places for a place of transcendence, of change, of articulation. Uh, and on the point of articulation, when you walk these stairs, you feel the articulation. The stairs, the stone steps are almost set up in a way to almost be painful. But you definitely feel the change as you move through it. Change happens through articulation. So 
I have a couple things I'm going to do here. Uh, I've been collecting feathers in my journeys. I've been following the feathers. And the feathers stay here. <clears throat> yeah, the feathers stay here. I'll get some close-ups of these meteorites. So grateful for being here. Many meteorites contain high metal content, allowing them to endure their fiery descent through the Earth's atmosphere. While some academics argue that these meteorites were merely used for shaping stones, I believe the civilizations that thrived here possessed advanced materials and capabilities far beyond that. Here, 23 meteorites are abundant, with 12 located in this very space. When I touched them, I was struck by how much colder they feel compared to stone. I later learned that meteorites are cold because they originate from deep space where their temperatures have remained frigid for eons. The Temple of the Moon. According to verbal tradition, this site served a ceremonial purpose, often referred to as an initiatory path. It is said that ayahuasca was used here to communicate with spirits and traverse portals to higher dimensions. The word ayahuasca comes from the Quechua language, where aya means soul or spirit, and wasca translates to vine or rope, essentially soul rope. This was a place where they could talk face to face with their gods. This was considered the final phase of initiation. Additionally, in the belief system, stone and man share a common origin. Stone is the common connection between man and the spiritual world. These structures also hint at interstellar or dimensional doors. Unfortunately, this grand cavern is now blocked off, as many sites across Peru are. The reason given is that visitors are kept getting lost inside, and also there is visible damage to the megalithic structures within this cave. I find myself increasingly curious about how these megalithic structures connect to the biblical narrative and the concept of a lost antediluvial world. There's a global story and connection with these megalithic structures.
So what happens? We've been talking a bit around living stone, frequency, vibration, resonance. What happens when you take a meteorite that has compounds in it that aren't typically found on the planet and you mix them together in a structure? What happens when they all resonate together? What kind of a energetic product comes out of that? 